We have a few announcements in the bulletin I'd like to go over before I introduce our wonderful preacher today. Um, the first one being Wally's concert yesterday to benefit Lesser Lowe Church. Um, they raised over a thousand dollars. It was wonderful. All the artists there were very talented and, and God was with us. Um, so in your bulletin, um, we have dates of choir rehearsal on Thursdays at 1 and Sundays at 10.30. Uh, the consistory meeting says to be determined, but I think we already have a date for that. I just don't know off the top of my head. Steve, do you? Uh, it's in early May. I don't have to date. Uh, shoot it out when you, when you find it in there. Thanks. It's May uh, 23rd. <coughs> May 23rd. May 23rd. Thank you, Dad. Um, Steve and I are co-facilitating our support group on Tuesday nights. The next lesson will be April 30th at 7 o'clock, coming up this week. Um, and the Clarksville Historic Historical Society program is in the fellowship hall on Wednesday, May 1st at 7 o'clock as well. Um, we have a lasagna dinner fundraiser coming up. I don't see Diane here today, um, so we're going to skip through that because she seems to vote. Bye, you guys home? Yeah, here is um Diane asked me to make an announcement that there's a sign-up sheet in the back for the lasagna dinner. Okay. All right, thank you. Where is it, Bob? Uh, in the back of the table. Oh, okay. And we also have a hot dog social coming up on Sunday, June 2nd, following the worship service. Of course, next week we'll be uh, taking communion, and there'll be a fellowship after that as well, so keep that in mind. Um, and if you turn the page, um, there's a Lost Radio Rounders um, thing coming up, um, which I mentioned. There's a sign out front about it. Um, I'm not too familiar with it, and I didn't know that I was doing the announcements here until about 28 seconds ago. So um, you'll just have to bear with me. I also don't see Maria here today, but the dessert that we're providing through IPH, which is a great mission, as you all know, um, desserts are commitment for May 11th, and I believe either Dave or Steve are going to be delivering that. Um, so, if you would bring cookies and, you know, obviously cook them first, um, bring them to church on Friday, May 10th, uh, between 1 and 3 is the deadline for that. Um, and we do have a sign-up sheet for spring cleaning projects coming up. Um, there's a lot of things need to be done, and they say many hands make a little work. Um, so thank you, and um, it's great to see you all here this morning. And I would like to turn things over to Reverend Barbara Morgan this morning.
God. You created the universe just by speaking the words, let it be there. With one breath, you gave a lifeless lump of clay animation. What was only once an etching, it became humanity, and, the, and humanity formed in the image of God. Gracious God, the Gospel of John says that Christ, your word became flesh, a living word, a touching word, an enlightening word, an empowering word, a healing word, a word which expresses nothing but love. Yet when we think of you, we don't necessarily think of love. We often think of earthquakes and floods and fires and storms. We fail sometimes to think of the simple things, the words that are spoken. We don't think of those tender words, those whispers, those glances, the eyes that say a thousand words all at once. But maybe that's what we should be thinking of. As we worship you this morning, open our eyes to the power that shaped the world through the beat of a heart rather than through thunder. In the name of in the name of all those who listen to and hear your word, may we feel the love that you have given us, the flesh that's indwelling, and through Jesus Christ, our brother. And we say, Amen. Our journey in our call to worship. God's love, strong and true. God's love, everlasting and bold. God's love, gentle yet persistent. God's love, abundant and uplifting. God's love forever leading us to sing and to pray, to serve and to pray. And our opening hymn this morning is He Leadeth Me.
cares for us, the brokenness of the world and the sin and despair in our hearts threaten to consume us as a mighty flood. Yet God is our hope and our firm foundation. Let us confess our sins before God and one another. Let us pray. <coughs> Merciful Savior, and 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 Savior, and
God. You do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth. Make us hungry for this heavenly food, that it may nourish us today in the ways of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, the Lord of heaven. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from the epistle of John. First John. The fourth chapter, beginning at the seventh verse. Hear the word of the Lord. Dear friends, and I'm going to stop right there. Our translation says, dear friends. Many of the others say, beloved. And it seems to me that beloved means a little bit more than just dear friends. I'm going to backtrack a little bit too. John was writing this gospel or this letter to some of the newer churches. They've been established for a while, but not too long. And they were having problems. There were disagreements. There were people that were leaving. There were people that challenged each other as to what they believed and what was right and what was wrong. It was not an easy time, and I don't really think he would have said, dear friends. That just sounds very impersonal. Beloved. Beloved has much more of a connotation to it, and I think that's the connotation that, that John really wanted, and the connotation that we need even today. So, beloved, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us so that he sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, beloved, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives with him, and his love is made complete in us. I'm going to change a word here, too. God lives in us. If we abide by God, God abides with us, and we abide with God. He lives with us, yes, but abiding has more of a, a sense to it. This is how we know that we, this is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us his son. And we have seen, and, and we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him, and he lives in God. And so we know that. And so we know and relay and trust the love that God has for us. God is love. Whoever loves lives in God, and God lives in them. We abide together. This is how love is made complete, so that we will have confidence on that day of judgment. In the world we live, in the world we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God, yet hates his brother or sister, is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother or sister, whom they have seen, cannot love God, whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command, anyone who loves God must also love our sisters and brothers. Amen. I understand, my understanding may not have him. The garden.
the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. That's the only <coughs> thing there is too little of. It's not a Bible song. It's a message that we've heard many times and we hear it in many different places and in many different ways. Love. I sometimes think that that's a four-letter word that we use too much. We lose, use it too much that it loses meaning and we don't know really what we think of it. We hear that God loves us. And deep down we know that. We know that God loves us and God will do anything for us. He's given us everything we have. He's given us our world, he's given us our lives, he's given us every single breath that we take. We know this, and we know that he loves us. But I sometimes wonder if we accept that love as well as we should. I, I don't like to put shoulds on anybody, but I'm putting it on myself too. I think sometimes, and I've talked to so many people who have said basically things like, well, God loves me, but I'm not really good enough to be loved. And when we have that feeling, when we feel that we aren't good enough, we can't accept all that love that God has to give for us. And the problem is, if we can't accept all the love that God gives us and know that we are good enough for God, it's hard to share that. You know, I've been doing a lot more reading now than I ever used to. Um, I've been doing a lot of Old Testament reading. And you look at the Old Testament and you look at the number of times that it looks like God was angry with people. He was trying to teach them. It wasn't the same as what we get in the New Testament. But what was happening is that people would be doing something and God would say, if you follow my ways, if you do it my right way, if you listen to me and you don't put other gods before you, things will work out well. I will be with you. And time and time again, from Adam and Eve through, through generations, it happens. We don't listen to what God has to say. We don't put God first. We don't accept what God is giving us as well as we should. That's, and that's sad. But I think it's part of being human. I think that's because it's happened throughout the ages. When Jesus came along, he called his disciples. Look at the people that he called his disciples. He didn't call powerful people. He didn't call people who thought that they were at the top of the world. He didn't call the religious leaders, or the military leaders, or the, the political leaders. He called simple, ordinary people. Sometimes that makes us sick. Oh, when we say simple, ordinary people, I don't think we always want to be simple, ordinary people, but we are. If we should be, if we are, we, have, we can be open to all that God has to offer us. Because the whole thing, this whole passage, and the whole, well, God loves us before we love him. We can't love him if he doesn't love us. And if he loves us and we accept that love, we can't help but want to share it. Come down to a little bit more personal level. Look at a time in your life when everything seemed rosy and everything was perfect and you just felt really good about everything around you. How did you relate to people then? You weren't grumpy with them, for sure. You would reach out to them. You'd, you'd try to share some of what you had with them. I think we lose that too often. And sometimes we lose that the out of Fear, out of the fear that they're not going to accept us, out of the fear that we're not good enough to share what we have with other people. But that's not what God tells us. God tells us 
but I love you, so I love you so much. I love you unconditionally. No matter what you do, I'm going to love you. I may not love what you've done, but I love you, and I will never walk away from that. I, I don't know how to make that point more clearly. I don't know how to make people feel that more fully. Because I know all too many people who don't feel it. They know it. They know it intellectually. They know it in their heads. But their hearts don't always get that message. God sent his only son, his one and only son, whom he loved more than anything else in the world. And he sent him into this world. He sent him, first of all, to show us how to live, to show us what we should do, to show us how we could accept everyone. Not necessarily always like them, but accept them and love them and know that there's something good in each and every person out there that's missing in our world today, that's missing in our lives today, that's missing in our churches today as much as it was missing in the churches back in Jesus' time or after Jesus' time, the early churches. I've often heard it said that sometimes the place that you least see love expressed is in a church. And I don't like that saying. But sometimes if you go to church meetings or you look at people in churches and you think of the disagreements that are going on, they're all over the place. They're all over the world, too. The world is a mess. We can't do much more than pray for the world. But maybe, maybe if we worked at our own level, at the small level, at the little things we can do, our families, our friends, our neighbors, those around us, if we could begin to show some of that love, and love starts with acceptance. Love starts with seeing that there's a little bit of God in each and every one of us. And God sees some of, us, some of that in us too. We start teaching our kids when they're little. We teach them all these wonderful songs. We think, teach them, Jesus loves me, this I know. But the Bible tells me so. And we believe it. But do we believe it as fully as we could? We say we love because God first loved us. And he did. And he does. We use, we started out, well, it started out years ago with all the laws that were written in the Old Testament, all the laws that it was impossible to figure out, feel, but to follow all those laws. There were just too many. We have trouble when we try to remember the Ten Commandments. Imagine having 600 and some laws to follow instead. You'd be bound to break them just by breathing. And yet, the said Ten Commandments were more than we could manage, and are more than we could manage. And so God said, one more love. He said, what is the greatest commandment? The greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. That's written in Leviticus. That's way back in the Old Testament. That's repeated again by Jesus in the New Testament. And he adds to it, love your neighbor as yourself. I always had a problem with that. Because I want to love my neighbor, whoever my neighbor happens to be, whether they're here, whether they're across the road, whether they believe as I do, or on the other side of the world. But how do I love myself? How much of myself can I, can I feel that I have that much to share? Do we have that much to share? Do we? Not do we have it, because we do have it. God gives it to us. Do we believe that we have it? Do we honestly feel that we are good enough that what we have we can give to other people? And if we don't, how about we share what we do have? How about just looking at the people around you and saying, hey, you know, I'm thinking of you today. 
I want what's good for you today. Even as Butch Clink just reminded me this morning, even if you don't get my name right, know me. Know what I have to say. Know what I can give to you. Reach out to other people. There's people all around us that are hurting. I don't think we have to go too far. We can even look to ourselves, and we're probably hurting in some way or another, too. And we need others to understand that and to share the love that they have with us. We can't change the world. We can pray for the world. We can pray that God finds a way to change the world. But I think we start changing the world little by little, right where we are, with a word, with something kind to say, to reach out to somebody who's a little bit different than you are, to say, mm, you may not be me, but you probably got good points too. You've got things that we could share. We all have similarities. We all breathe the same air. We have so much. And we have so much that we can share with one another. We just need to accept that love. Accept the fact that we are beloved, that we are cared for. And if we are beloved, so is Joe next door and Sally down the street and whoever happens to be living across the world. God is there for all of us. We may think of them differently. We may not use the same words. We may get angry with one another because we're not saying what everybody wants us to say and not believing what everybody wants us to believe. But God doesn't care if we believe the same thing. He just wants us to love people. You know, love not only your friends, love your enemies. And sometimes you'll love your enemies even better. And sometimes what happens when you love your enemies, they can turn out to be your friends or at least people that you can begin to understand more and accept better. I think I've gotten way off the, the scripture text, but love is such a big, big topic. And when I looked at what I had decided to preach on this morning, I thought, how can you possibly do that? That's, that's too much. And how can you tell other people to love when you have problems loving yourself? But the more I talk to people, the more I thought, you know, I don't think I'm necessarily in the minority. I think all of us need to find and feel God's love more than we do. And I think it's there for us. And once we begin to feel that ourselves, once we accept the fact that God loves us just as we are, not that he doesn't think that we could be better, but he loves what we are. And he starts there. You know, before I started, I was quoting some of the children's songs that we teach our kids, and they teach them in Sunday school and Bible school. And one of my favorites is, we love because God first loved us. And I can remember coming home from vacation Bible school with my kids in the car, and one of my four-year-old twins looked at me and she said, I don't love God. I just spent hours teaching them. I spent weeks getting vacation Bible school arranged, put all this time and effort. What do you mean you don't love God or God doesn't love you? She says, she said, well, she said, he doesn't come. He doesn't clean my house. doesn't come and clean my house, it would be nice if he did, but I never expected that. What she was doing was she wasn't singing, we love because God first loved us. She was singing, we love because he sweeps the dust. <laughs> and you know, I spent many years looking at that and kind of <coughs> snickering because of her misinterpretation. But the more I think about, maybe she had it right and we have it wrong. We do love. And he does sweep the dust. 
He sweeps the dust and the cobwebs and all the things that stand between us and him and between us and everyone else away from us every opportunity he gets. It may not make my floor cleaner, but it definitely can make my life better and yours and everyone else's. So let's let Jesus and God sweep away the dust. Sweep away the dust so that we can accept his love, accept his love more fully than we have before. We're never going to be perfect at it. We're human beings. And we can't be perfect, but we can be a little bit better than we were. We can bring just a little bit more love into our part of the world. A little bit more caring. A little bit more reaching out. Not necessarily across the world, although that would be wonderful, but sometimes right in your own backyard. We love because he first loved us. And because he loved us, he does sweep that dust away. He sweeps it right out of our house. He sweeps it right out of our hearts. He sweeps it out of our lives. Let him keep sweeping. And as that dust scatters, take those little pieces that are left over and share a little bit of that love that he's left behind with everyone else. And while you're sharing it with everyone else, accept it for yourself as well. Amen. Now to the one who by the power of it is able to do far more than all we can ask. To God be glory in the church and in our lives forever and ever. Amen. Please join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We give our gifts in love and thanksgiving for all that we have been given. Help us to give with hearts and minds open to the possibilities of what we can do to help heal the brokenness of our world.
these gifts that we bring before you, may they, along with our lives, work to further your kingdom in our world and in our lives. Blessed be God forever. Let's pray. God of earth and heaven, hear our prayers for the world, the world that you have loved with an unending, unforgettable love. Bring to mind those who are often forgotten, those who are the last of their generation, those who are the only ones in their family, those who have lost loved ones and the ones that they love the most. May we reach out to such lonely ones and include them in our lives and in our family love. God of all nations and people, all peoples that are acknowledged and ignored, all nations, give to the, give to the, may all nations give the tribute and worship to your oneness that the brokenness and hostile factions of humanity may find unity in your worship and peace and justice. And Father of all, parent of all parents, help both parents and children to find ways to communicate openly and honestly, both hearing and being heard, so that they may settle disagreements and that they may each give to each other Son of both freedom and responsibility, creator of the perfect and healer of the imperfect, grant continued health to those who are well and healing and recover to those who are sick. Hear us as we name in our hearts those whose illnesses and injuries are on our minds. Continue to provide healing for your church and the class, the apostles healed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, so that today the lame may walk and the deaf hear and the mute speak, to, to give you praise and glory to your holy name. May all the congregations of your church join in confident prayer that God will continue to care for the earth and those in it. God of all times and places. We praise you for all of your servants who have been faithful to you on earth and who now live with you in heaven. Keep us in community with them until we meet with all your children in the joy of your eternal kingdom. We ask these things through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And our last hymn is My Savior's Love.
And now may the love of God go forth from this place to love one another as much as God has loved us. Go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you.